You're listening to the RE Social Podcast with your hosts, Andrew and Vince from OnV Invest. For more information, go to onvinvest.com. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of RE Social Podcast. Today, we're all caffeinated. We're going to go crazy on squatter rights. How are you doing, Drew? Oh, I'm doing great. Cold plunge caffeine and then six years of dealing with squatter issues. I'm about to unload. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So for listeners who are um, listening, do you want me to give them an explanation? Yeah. How- let's, let's let, you know what? Let, how we usually do with our, you know, our new guests. Yeah. We get like that quick little like 60 second intro. Let's do that. But more like based on our topic at hand, which is the squatter issue. What's up, guys? Uh, I guess we could also do this as an Envy update, too. So this is um, Andrew and Vince. You're on Envy Invest. Uh, we've been in the game for about six years. Wanted to highlight some things that we've been facing with squatters, rights and stuff. We live in California, but uh, we manage a portfolio close to about $10 million. We started with uh, nothing. And we have a lot of uh, partners with us as well right now. So Drew and I own half of the portfolio by ourselves and then you know the rest is owned by our friends who are listening friends and family friends and family only and um throughout this journey you know we've encountered a couple of key issues that have been uh especially critical in terms of preventing us from having you know sufficient cash flow so we've had thankfully uh decent incomes from our own other endeavors w2 job for bits business self and uh, but through the course of the years in terms of just the the actual cash loss the opportunity loss and rent i think is added up to what did you total it to 125 000 yeah it's more than 150 grand that's more money than i make in a whole year yeah so you know that that's the amount that we will never get back that um, had we not had squatter issues, um, we would have in our pocket to keep growing, providing housing and to provide clean homes, updated homes, just providing value to any community we decide to put money into. So that, that money is gone. It's, it's out. And that's because of squatter rights and squatter issues, especially namely in California, not to call out California, but that's where we started. And, um, We've had some of the issues uh, of having somebody illegally stay in your place and, you know, basically stay there for as long as they possibly can. Well, we have to pay the legal fees and go through the courts and, you know, be hounding our property manager. What's going on? Give the update. What's are they still there? Like, and then even not to call out all of our property management, there's one in particular where we showed up. And they were supposed to bring, you know, a guy to change the locks. Didn't even happen there. So this is that's a whole different tangent there. But the point is, is we've been investing in property for six years. And for almost all of those six years, we have had a squatter issue. Not the same squatter, but through the multiple homes that we purchase, we've somehow got <laughs> one squatter at least. In one of our homes where it's just this issue where they're living rent free and we're working through the courts to get them out. And sometimes it takes as long as nine months, especially when COVID hit, that definitely pushed that timeline back. And it kind of put pressure on a lot of landlords to try to figure it out through other means, such as cash for keys. Uh, and you know, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and dial it back. The caffeine's definitely kicked in, <laughs> but Vince. Give me your reflection on kind of what's been going on. What's yeah. So I wanted to help the listeners understand what's the difference between trespassing and squatting, right? So that's a key difference. So trespassing is a criminal offense. So if I'm sleeping in my house, you walk in, you're like threatening me, California, I stand the ground, I could just shoot you in the face and you're dead, right? That is, you can argue either way for that. Now, if I go on vacation, and you're living in my house and it's been 30 days and I come in, you call the cops and I, the property owner, will go to jail for coming into my own home. That is squatting. And that's, uh, that's, that's the legal procedure. So now what happens is from, uh, from a criminal offense as trespassing, which is, you know, if I just you, you go to Walmart, come back, there's somebody else, you can call the cops. They will 
throw them out on the street, right? And arrest them. But if you go to Walmart for a month and you come back with somebody else in your home, you cannot now get them out. Now, a lot of the time people just assume, oh, you guys, you know, people are just rich landlords. It doesn't matter. You could just do that. But what about like mom and pop? You know, they only have a couple of rental properties and they have to pay the taxes and stuff. And this actually is true. Even if you are renting too, you can't kick them out. So even if you're renting out, you continue paying rent. So that's the key difference between trespassing and squatting. So that's a big difference. So, you know, so what happens is if, if I go somewhere, I come back after a month and somebody's in my house, I call the cops. They're going to say, well, now this is a civil matter. We cannot get involved. You have to get the courts involved. So now I got to file a petition with the court for saying, hey, somebody's illegally staying in my home. I can't go back in. And the courts will be like, oh, well, we are back logged. So it's going to take three months. So now I'm homeless for three months living with my sister and uh, I can't actually go into my own home and then they can play games to just extend it as much as you can. Eventually they will get evicted even in a blue state like California, but it just puts a lot of hardship on, you know, the people who actually own properties. It doesn't make any sense that they're giving all these rights to people who are not following the law. In fact, should we tell them about the story we have? Yep. Yep. So check this out, right? So we have a really nice uh, uh, tenant. I actually met them in person a couple of days ago. We were talking to them and, you know, come to find out their home, somebody moved in illegally and they're not, they're refusing to move out. So now this is a nice family. They go to church. They actually work for a church. Um, she's got two little girls and they cannot go into their home. The cops said, sorry, we can't help you. Good luck. So they're now they're trying to do the eviction process, but it's been months. The worst case is she's six months pregnant. She's six months pregnant. She's got two toddlers and the court's like, yeah, good luck. You know, go figure yeah. it out. So we're working with the church. You know, we're trying to get some money and she's staying in one of our homes because of squatter rights issues, right? So the state of California has decided we're going to give these people who are unlawfully like, you know, kicking out people, their own people who own the place, but, you know, they can't move back in. So now they're living with us. Yeah. They can figure it out. That's insane. It's a weird full circle kind of a thing because we've been dealing with it for a long time. Knock on wood, we don't have squatter issue right now at this time. However, now we're hosting guests in our furnished, some of our furnished rentals who are stuck there and raising funds through their church to, you know, pay like the decent market rent that we're charging in order to stay there. And it's because of the squatter issue as well. It's just become such, I think that be, between, I'm totally guessing, but I'm guessing because of social media, I think the word has kind of gotten out amongst maybe this just certain class of people that is now sharing this information and exposing the loopholes in the system that are helping them to exploit guys like us who are just guys trying to like, create some kind of family legacy and something for our kids, kids, like for some, like for me, the whole thing is, is I want freedom and I want that, you know, freedom to be as generous as possible. And let's just call it what it is in order to have that you need to have good finances, have your finance game on point. So that's why I have so much discipline. And this has been one of the biggest hurdles in getting to that point. It's sub cash flow from my business, uh, from my other businesses, like sub cash flow from our business. And it's for been as, uh, from growing even more and helping some of my other family and friends to get involved because we're over here distracted with dealing with the squatter issue. So it's just been this interesting journey. And it's interesting that, you know, we're just now talking about it. I feel like we could have talked about it five years ago. Um, it, but right now, as of, what is this, the 28th of April, 2024, is when we're recording this, it's become kind of a, a bigger issue. I'm seeing a lot of news stories um, and a lot of uh, fellow investors start to talk about it, have guests on. Uh, there's this one guy who's kind of becoming, uh, I think he's becoming kind of famous amongst investors. Uh, I think his name is Flash or something like that, where he basically figured out the loophole in the system and he just out squats the squatters, which is crazy. And it's a whole business. And there's other, there's multiple businesses popping up. Uh, shout out to uh, our boy Fabian, who's a fellow investor who comes to our, our meetups. He actually hit me with a, a link to a, a local company. I think they're based out of Irvine. 
and I open it up and it's a whole like, and it's, you can tell it's like a fresh business. It's like a fresh page. Um, and their whole business is, you know, get the squatters out with a two week guarantee and all that. It's wild to me that that's now an industry. That's now a thing, you know, it's just, and that, I think that's just proof of how out of control it's got, uh, especially in California, because yeah, we can get them out and we can go through the courts, but it takes months and it takes a long time and a lot of headache and you're just losing what could be potential income. Uh, and it's that, you know, you're, and you're just trying to do the right thing. There's not a lot you can do. You know, you can't just walk up and be like, Hey, you guys got to get out and start packing their stuff. Uh, they'll literally arrest you. That actually happened uh, to this lady in Queens where yeah. she had this home. It was her, was her mom's or something like that. You might know the story better than I know it. Yeah. So there was this lady, uh, older lady. She, um, it was, I think a mom's home. She inherited it and she went to the home. She found there was like, there was squatters there. So, um, she moved them out some with, with the cops or something. And then she, she went and then, uh, she changed the locks because she moved back in and then she went out and she came, uh, back. The squatters were back in the place and the squatters called the cops and the cops arrested the owner who pays the property taxes and pays the mortgage. And she went to jail because yeah. uh, she changed the locks on her own home. And yeah. I think, I think this actually really like pissed a lot of people in New York. And then I yeah. think they're, I, I, they're introducing a bill, I believe to yeah. change some laws. And, yeah. um, it, and that's not even uh, accounting for the other story where the lady uh, was murdered. So there was another lady who went on vacation. She came back. I think she went on vacation. She came back. The, 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 uh, the place was occupied by squatters. And uh, she showed up, so she, they cut her up, put her in a duffel bag, and uh, you know, um, hit their body. So you know, so if, when you start incentivizing people for bad behavior, you're going to get more bad behavior. You know, like yeah. what happens? Like if uh, my nieces are living in an apartment complex, and it's uh, three of the units are filled with squatters, and they're just like partying and doing drugs. I don't want them there, you know, so why are we, you know, protecting them and not the little girls who are, you know, living there, it's, which makes no sense. I was talking about this to some of uh, my friends from work and they were saying, oh, yeah, landlords, they're just like, they're just collecting rent. They're not even doing anything. No, it doesn't make any sense. You know, like when people think like that, it's like we still have to pay for property taxes, right? I have to pay the water bill, sometimes uh, electricity bill if it's a shared uh place right it's two three units you still have to pay mortgage you still have to pay mortgage insurance you have to uh, build insurance on the property you have to maintain the property mm -hmm. all of this if you account for everything you really don't make any money on it until the property appreciates in value over a long period of time and people don't understand this and they don't follow the law and like don't help uh, have legislation that uh, promotes these kind of you know bad behavior to be penalized you know people try to keep doing that and taking advantage of it. You now somebody had to die. Like this old lady had to be cut somebody up in pieces. had to die in order for things to start to kind of come to light. And I think it's probably, you know, been building up for years because, you know, of course we're not alone in, in our journey of just um, small guys trying to be big guys and investing in real estate. <laughs> and I think it's becoming more and more talked about uh, as it becomes more rife and more commonplace, it's just, I think this, that murder was what really was like, okay, well now we got to look at it for sure. And so I think Florida just passed something that's really harsh on squatters, which is awesome. Um, Georgia as well. Georgia. It, I actually didn't know that. What, it, what did Georgia pass? Georgia is passing a bill. I think it, it still has to get signed by the governor, but I think the house, uh, uh, the two parties have already signed on that. Um, the governor should sign. I think the governor is a Republican. Um, they're trying to make squatting into more of a criminal offense than a civil matter. Civil, that's mm. where the problem is. When mm. you get a civil matter, you got to go to court. Mm. It takes a while to get right. them evicted, right? So that's the big problem. So Florida has favorable laws now. Georgia is doing, I was surprised New York did that. Yeah, straight up yeah. New York. It's wild to me. Oh. California actually passed a law from January saying, you know, usually if I'm not mistaken in California, you, you know, if you have a squatter, you can get them out and then for 30 days, they can't move back in. Right. But I think they can squat again after that. Mm. This is uh, unlikely, but right. California passed a law now saying it's up to three years. Wow. So if they ever show up on a property again, they'll go to jail instantly. So that's good. Something, you know, and, and I don't want to just bash California, you know, because they're, they're trying, you know, right. I, they're not, they're not exactly just trying to, you know, 
put guys like us out on the streets. They, they're just trying to help. I get it. Their heart's in the right place. But unfortunately, it's kind of, you know, things have gotten a little bit carried away. Now, what's interesting, I mean, just to, just to go through our journey uh, of what's been our like squatter journey, the very first property we ever purchased a triplex in Bakersfield, we instantly inherited not just one, but two squatters. Two, had, and then the middle unit too. Actually, all of them this morning. Well, the middle unit was vacant, and so we were in there fixing it. You had Shorty up. there, right? Yeah, it'll <laughs> shout to Shorty. Uh, and so we had like some drug dealing happening in one and they just wouldn't answer the door. I remember knocking on the door many times. Uh, and then the, there was a family in the left that like just didn't pay and had their own excuses. And so I remember it was like the, the eviction day was, I think, almost the same day for both of them. It just a matter of how it timed out with the courts. Um, and then we you know, had somebody through a, you know, a connection out there help out with protecting the property from squatters. And he ended up squatting in another property of ours, which is why we're like, wait a minute, what? And so uh, I wanted to bring that up to talk about like the lesson that uh, we learned, which was just make everybody go through your system, make uh, look at rent rolls, your due diligence, um, look at bank statements and, um, and get referrals, get referrals. For me, whenever I'm hiring a potential employee, Whenever I'm uh, considering a new vendor or especially a tenant, which can make or break your real estate career, um, I'm looking at referrals. I'm calling up employers. I'm calling up past landlords. Uh, I literally am doing this because we're getting, uh, we do a lot of Zillow leads now. And I don't want to do this, but like uh, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to vet these people. Just keep going down the line of, of, uh, other squatters and learning lessons because I want to give a lot of value to whoever's listening. Not just rant about squatters, but <laughs> as fun as that is. Uh, there was the one in um, Mintone that we inherited. This is, I think, our most recent one. Mm. One of the most recent ones. No, the recent one we evicted but was that Iris. was Iris. Yeah. How crazy is that? Like, there's been so many. We're like, well, which one was it? There was the one that we had where we uh, bought a property, inherited a couple tenants. I think one tried to squat in the back get her out or yeah i think we, we just paid her some money yeah so cash for keys which is where you just kind of just suck it up you hand them a check for the contract and say you're out by certain you day. know what's really funny though i wanted to bring this up is, yeah. is um when we do have squatters right 100 percent of the time we'll hit them up and be like hey what's going on yeah and half of them will be like yeah bro you know we can't really pay you know we can't afford it and we're like that's cool. No problem. We'll give you another 30 days, no rent. If you move out, all good. We won't even go after you for the rent. And yeah. half of them do take it. Half of them, they're like, you know what? We're out and we won't do anything and your credit won't be affected. Sure. And they leave. Right. Is We just don't like, because we're not trying to say that, hey, you can't pay rent. Fuck you, you know, get out of the, on the street. Right. We're like trying to, you know, make things work. We're running a business, right? So when they do take it, we let them go. Is the people who take advantage of the system yeah. and then they buy new cars. I mean, during COVID, we had guys buying cars and new TVs and not paying rent for up to a year. Yep. Just insane. Yep. You know? And that's the big gripe is they're taking advantage of what was initially in place to help people, you know, um, and now it's hurting people. So real quick, though, the dumbest thing that ever happened to us with the squatter was was property we had in Highland Street. Uh, she squatted for a year. And then at that point, they were doing some COVID relief for uh, landowners. Oh. And then the Cal state of California decided, hey, you haven't paid rent in a year. Yeah. So here's uh, $20,000 to you for not paying rent. And they gave the money to the tenant. And of course, the tenant didn't pay. And then they took the money. So yeah. they got paid for squatting. Yeah. This is how stupid the government is. Like, I mean, yeah. think of dumb stuff. I was in shock. Have you thought about investing in real estate and taking advantage of all of those benefits without any of the work? That is something that On the Invest not only provides, but has been providing since its inception. With friends and family, we have built an empire in a system of a wealth generating tool that is giving us and our friends and family that leverage in their life to create true wealth. Go to ontheinvest.com for more to see if you qualify, and thanks for listening. All that is to say is um, it's been a, a quite a big issue just with small guys like us just trying to grow a portfolio. 
uh, granted mostly in the state of California. But some of the learning lessons along the way, like I was saying, just do your due diligence. If you're inheriting tenants, make sure you vet them and screen them as if you were bringing in new tenants. If you have new tenants, make sure you're, you've got a system in place and nobody, whether it's your friend, your mom, or some rando, friend of a friend, they have to go through the same, you know, rigorous screening with no mercy. Sorry. Like if your credit score is not at a certain level, if you're not making two and a half to three times the income, whatever your standards are, you know. You know, California is changing that too. Oh, they're saying, hey, way? are you a convicted rapist? Uh, you cannot not give me the place. You have to rent it to them. Because you know what makes more sense for my nieces to live next to? Convicted rapists. That's wild. Yeah. And credit score, they're saying, hey, you should not uh, look at a credit score to deny them. So it's basically like the, we're teaching people to be like not good. And then we're incentivizing them to be poor and then right. rewarding them for it. And something that I'm getting better at as a, as a you know, business owner and, and growing uh, the two kind of little empires that I have is human behavior and incentive. And it, to the point to now where I'm like, I write contracts with my new staff members. I have a music school. And so I've been implementing this and it's been pretty encouraging. And, and I've noticed a, a little bit of a shift for sure, almost right away, because I incentivize them. I have positive and negative incentives that are based on like simple numbers. And so there's no emotion. It's like, oh, cool. We'll hit this. Awesome. Well, now you're getting paid that. Or here's a bonus here. Or if it's now, if we're, if we're dipping, it's like, oh, sorry, you made less. You know, so I'm tying uh, my staff to essentially my business, to my success without giving them equity. Um, I'm just tying them to the actual like uh, MRR, the monthly revenue. So the point is, is um, I'm using this, this notion of incentive and then, but also I shouldn't forget that I'm also being incentivized constantly by everything as we all are. And so this is why, you know, if I was to receive a million dollar check, I'll put three quarters of that in the state of Tennessee, not saying that they don't have their own squatters rights. Every state does, of course, but in Tennessee, we've had a lot of success. We've had pretty much all the boxes are getting checked for us in terms of what we've been looking for as investors. So I'd be putting that in there. And definitely not in California because it's been such a pain to just get a squatter out. I think the one I was referring to, she was in there for nine months. She was breeding French bulldogs. And uh, man, that was a struggle to get her out. I remember being on site and talking to this person and saying, hey, like, how's it going? Let, can we work something out? Again, it's this whole story about how, oh, yeah, I'm going to get it all caught up. <laughs> and of course... I called our property management right after on the way home and they just kind of laughed at me. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. she's been telling us that for months. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Good story. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, it's, the point is, is it, you've got to really make sure you're doing your research on the state, also on just the local municipality because it's so complex that it goes all the way down to that level. Uh, just as if you were going to be doing a furnished rental, you want to look at well, where are their laws and keep in mind that things can change. These laws are, are getting voted on all the time. Now, fortunately, I think in terms of uh, the squatter issue, it is getting voted on and starting to sway in the other direction. I do believe that is actually a thing just in what I'm seeing on the news, which is an amazing relief. What I wanted to talk about before we kind of you know end is, well, why the heck is the squatter rights thing a thing? Where did it come from? And it comes from, I believe, the Homestead Act of what year was it? There was a, in 1800s, uh, uh, the government was incentivizing people to go west, primarily California, and then go start a life because there was no population here. And they would go and then they'll build a house and they'll have family, they have kids, and then they take care of the land, right? Mm -hmm. Then what they didn't want to happen is, 20 years later, the landowner shows up and they're like, wait a minute, this is my land. So you guys all need to get kicked out. So they wanted to protect those guys. So like, wait, they actually worked the land for 20 years. Yeah, improved it. Improved it. So they get some rights. That's where it comes from. It has nothing to do with tenants. Right. So now it's just like a loophole, of like 200, 250 years old. Yeah. Because so tenant rights, I think there should have some tenants. Like California, they have rent control is 10% max. You could do, I'm fine with that. And if you... I have to give them notice for tenants to leave, you know, of course, you know, those things should be protected. Otherwise, you know, it'll be bad. I just don't like the unlawfulness of 
just people just randomly coming in, you know, breaking into your home and then taking it over. That's that's the ridiculous part. We almost had a squatter at um, a property that we own. That's he almost a, died. The furnished, it's a furnished home in, uh, uh, here in Orange County. And um, yeah, that was wild to me. Um, I get a phone call. I was in this very room, actually. And I get a phone call from my stepdad, who's like our main handyman. I think he was doing something on the, I don't know. Anyways, he calls me up. He's like, hey, did you uh, sell the such and such property? And I'm like, no. He's like, oh, well, this guy here is saying he owns it and he wants to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> and he's like, once you think you've seen it all, it's like then something happens like that. And uh, of course, the guy didn't want to talk to me at all. And uh, I notified Vince and we literally drove straight up there. It's about a half hour away and uh, met my stepdad there. He's like, oh, he took off. Anyways, the point is, is this guy had the balls to walk up to my stepdad, who's a pretty big guy, and say, hey, bro, what are you doing? And claim to own the property. I own this place. <laughs> my stepdad's just like, I don't know what kind of trust this guy is on. But I know the owner, like literally, I, you know. And then so, he was like, as a matter of fact, he's my boy. <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah. So it is. So the guy went up and like just tried to completely lie. And I don't know what his aim was. But then come to find out, he was kind of getting through this gate. He was living in the back. He had some stuff in this like the, the under the house, under the cellar and was doing his own laundry there because it was it was vacant for a couple of weeks. We were we fixing were, up some. We were fixing some issues. And just in a, in a week or so, like we already had somebody kind of start starting to kind of like do the sleeping around. It's a matter of time before he's, you know, really break, actually breaking the window to get in. And so I'd set up cameras um, and on both ends. So that way, uh, if he did, I could catch him in the act on the footage, bring that to the police uh, and say, hey, he actually was breaking and entering. You can see it right here. He broke through the window or the door. Now, he never got that far, but I got my cameras up real quick and that like next day. And what I do is I, I basically buy these. It's, a, it's like a solar connector to a ring camera that you can install. And if a dummy like me can do it in like 10 minutes, anyone can do it. It's like simple directions, couple tools. And so, yeah, I put one on the front, one on the back just to kind of protect us. And also I have, if this is in particular a Ring camera, I have a Ring subscription, uh, which basically stores it in a cloud for up to 60 days. And uh, so I have that peace of mind. So if something does happen, boom, I'm there. So in order to prevent squatters, that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, another thing is you can just basically be checking on the property or sending someone there just kind of like just go make sure no one's you know, breaking in or squatting. Uh, I would say, uh, obviously, having good locks, good doors, maybe even a, like, a, you know, an extra screen door, uh, and then maybe a fence, a gate. Um, there's things that you can do to prevent it. But even then, you're never truly insulated from this issue that is squatter rights. You have a little camera. Issue. Yeah, so it's it's just one of the things that you can, you can do your best to get get around it and prevent it. But it's pretty likely that if you are a um, an investor in probably any state, at some point you're going to have this issue. And or so, you're just a homeowner, you went on vacation. <laughs> yeah, or you just own your own home, and now you're yeah. actually homeless because you, you know, went actually, to stay. Yeah, I want to give a couple of uh, quick. We got to yeah. on this other podcast, yeah. but um, a couple of good uh, stuff. So to wrap up, what like Drew's been saying is there's only two things you got to worry about, right, for squatters. One is Pretty easy to overcome. You just got to be a little cracked out like us. So you want to watch all of your properties all the time outside and make sure there's somebody going there, right? So as long as you're doing that and you're, it's every, even if it's like every week, you don't really get squatter rights if you're breaking in. To, like if I go, if I come here from the gym and there's somebody here, I could literally just beat you up. Like it is going to happen for sure because there's not been enough time for you to get those rights, right? So if you're doing that with every property, it's very hard. That's why we were driving there to, you know, the property in Orange County. If he was there, I would throw him out. And actually, yeah. as a matter of fact, he tried to come back and we yeah. called the cops and the cops actually caught on to him and they kind of put him in the back of the car and said, hey, if you show up on the property again, you're going to be in jail. And he yeah. never showed up again. 
But those are good stuff. And but not before there's some juiciness. But not before he was kicking, trying to kick down the door while we had new guests in there, new tenants in there. And they're like every day, they're like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but there's this crazy guy. Like the guy got pretty ballsy uh, once somebody moved in, which is interesting to me. I didn't catch that or I didn't call that, but I'm guessing it was the drugs and one part, a little bit of information about how squatter rights works. I don't actually even know, but the squatters are getting ballsy. Yeah, and to the to the point where they're like trying to break into a home that is occupied. And there was like, you know, there was like we had women and a couple of children in the house. And, you know, yeah. like in the States, like, you know what, we're going to give the people who are doing that more rights. Like, it doesn't make no. sense. Now, technically, they don't do that. Like, they don't have any rights. You can't break into my house and claim like your squad or you'll, you'll die. Like, that's not going to work. But if I've, nobody's there, you cannot do that and then stay there for 30 days, then you can do that. So. So just uh, the, so the one way is keep eyes on property. So you, you guys are always aware what's going on so you can kick them out with cops, right? Because it'll be a criminal offense or stress passing. Now, the other one is what Drew was talking about is make sure that you're vetting the tenants. Even if you do that, if they decide to squat in almost any state, you have to go through the eviction process because they will get squatter rights because they've been there for more than 30 days. So, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, and just to kind of like give them that last piece of advice that I would want to hear if I didn't know anything about this, how can they uh, officially be a squatter and need to go through the whole court system? What's what's the the qualifications? They need to be there for thirty days. They need yeah. to pay some utilities or what? I don't know. You don't have to do nothing. You could just be there for thirty days and you're pretty good. Isn't that crazy? So that's it. You just have to occupy the property. Is there something with the mail has to be going to you? Or? You have to establish a uh, residency. I think the, the the utilities and those things help. I mm -hmm. think if you can get it sooner than 30 days, I don't know if you get rights. Gotcha. Uh, different states is much easier to um, evict people. Mm -hmm. So that's why we recommend going to more red states because you want to go where, you know, the state is going to treat you well. Yeah. Uh, another juicy story just for fun in the most recent story that was a thought it might have been a squatter issue. And this is how like cracked out we are because <laughs> we've had this issue so long. Mm -hmm. So we have furnished rentals and this guy right before um, just was super awesome, very communicative. And all of a sudden when he moved in within a couple of days, his radio silent, like wasn't communicating back, wasn't even reading the messages. So like, okay, that's interesting. And so sure enough, you know, cleaners get there on the day of and they're like sending me pictures. You know, this guy's stuff is everywhere. Uh, he's still here, I think. And so, yeah, sure enough, um, all the stuff was there. So I was like, hey, no problem. I called up all my vendors, was hopping on the phones, got the cleaners back the next day. I got my uh, handyman there. We changed the locks, did actually another bathroom sink repair while we were there. Shout out to Spencer. And yeah, basically just I was like, no problem. We're just going to clean out those bags, clean out the unit. Change the locks. We're all good. And I, got, and I actually set up another camera in the back. <laughs> that's, how, that's how paranoid and cracked out I am. There's literally a camera right now watching that back door now as of because of that moment. So basically, um, that's how on it that you have to be. You have to watch it and be on it right away. So fortunately, um, you know, that didn't become an issue. Uh, to, this, to this day, I actually don't know what happened to that guy. Um, he he's either dead or in jail. Like, and I'm not. Kidding. I think he just left his stuff in bail. Like, you think so? Yeah. I don't because know. Nothing was valuable. It was like that's true. It's yeah, like some towels and clothes. Yeah, some jeans. <clears throat> but either way, so you know, that's kind of a, a, a if you want to take a, a final lesson for how we're dealing with it. I'm I'm just I'm blocking out my whole day and putting at the top of my priority list when something even smells like it might be a squatter, and that's unfortunately kind of how you have to be if you want to prevent this ha from happening, because once it's 30 days, it's a whole different conversation. It's a whole different set of rights. And that's what you want to prevent. Yeah. Anyways, good stuff. I think we got it done. Go tell your um, governor, send them mails. Yeah, them write, write them rights. letters mm -hmm. and, and tell them that, you know, you want to be on the side of preventing people from getting taken advantage of uh, with these kind of somewhat antiqua antiquated squatter rights. You know, what I've, I've learned, though, Drew, is, you know, everybody has their own thing that they're passionate about or like, you know, 
because you know most people are thinking yeah this is not my issue you know i don't have 10 houses like you guys so i don't really care well you should care if you ever want to own property in, in the united states you want to care a lot because yeah. what if you buy a house you go on vacation to hawaii come back yeah, i'm living in the house and yep. your daughter and your son john now you have to be you homeless. and your family are homeless like literally, literally homeless literally like our tenant in uh in santa Ana right now yep. she's she's living in our home because the cop said sorry we can't help you good luck it'll take six months to evict this person so they're just living there and while they're paying property taxes and mortgage which they can't afford yep so it's crazy raising funds so, through the church yeah so uh, for everyone yeah so definitely um you know be mindful of it and don't think it can't affect you even if you're you know not a property owner even if you're renting this is still a thing that can still do the exact same thing and if it does happen to you you know reach out to us we are very happy to be coaching a handful of clients uh, none of which have had that had this issue uh, thankfully but we're coaching them on the right moves to make step by step, basically almost, uh, dare I say, holding their hand through every piece of the, the, the process of just you know, looking at property, purchasing property the right way, uh, managing it, getting systems in place. The things that I wish I would have done six years ago, we're helping others with that. And that feels really good to do that. So if you guys are looking to do it the right way, prevent squatters from happening, prevent these bigger issues that we've had, you know, just definitely you know, hit us with a message. Um, you can uh, reach me at Andrew at OnTheInvestments.com. You can reach Vince at Vince at OnTheInvestments.com. Uh, I do coaching. He does coaching. We do group coaching as well for certain clients uh, who are willing to pay a little bit extra for that access. And uh, yeah, it feels great to give back. It feels great to help people to, uh, to not have all these heartaches and issues that we've had for the past uh, six years. Any final words, Vince? No, that's it. Uh, we're going to go record a podcast with sam now let's so do it excited Thanks all right guys see you guys. guys bye i don't know about you but i definitely like to see five star reviews on any service or any product before i purchase please take a second to leave us a five star review whether you're listening to it on apple itunes or spotify or whatever platform take a second it goes a long way helps us a lot to grow the channel and thanks for listening